What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 67 of the Charge to the Top here of Hereford FC and we are back. It's the second episode of the season. Today we're going to be taking on Fulham as you can see just looking at the league table here. We're currently in 8th for a little bit of an underperformance perhaps so far. Fulham who we take on today are in 10th and uh, well you can see here both teams with the exact same record. Of course Fulham relegated last season so big pressure on them you'd imagine uh, to be in the automatic promotion spots this year really kind of fighting I guess to get back into the Premier League. For us, you know, 8th so far, it's not too bad. Of course, last year we finished 7th, and uh, we've only lost two of our opening seven games. And while well, speaking of losses, of course, if you watched last episode, you would have seen our defeat away against Burnley. Since then, as you can see, we've played six matches. Uh, one was in the EFL Cup, which we advanced in. We beat MK Dons 4-1, a very convincing performance there. And, uh, well, as you can see, there were five league games to speak of, the first of which was against Huddersfield. A bit of a disappointing result, this one. Of course, um, we lost against Burnley previously. You want to get back on the straight and narrow end. Our home form is going to be important, I think, this year. Uh, and, well, I guess home and away form is important. But your home form, I think, especially when you're a team like ourselves, it's very crucial, I guess, that you kind of turn Edgar Street into a fortress. And, uh, well, this fortress was uh, broken into, as you can see here, by Connor Washington. Uh, he got a hat-trick, including a goal in the 90th minute. Sean Mulhall was sent off. I can't really use that as an excuse, if I'm honest. Despite that red card, though, to be honest, he's been very, very good for us. A 7.03 rating for him, but he did lose his call. It was two bookings in the same kind of two-minute period for him, and, well, we never really recovered. Following on from that, there was a little bit of a recovery, I guess you could say, in terms of our form. We took on Barnsley first, a 2-2 draw here, uh, a very tight game. Two goals, as you can see, scored in the 69th minute. We actually scored first, and I thought at that moment we were going to win the game. We were by far and away the better team. Um, I don't really have any kind of doubts in saying that. You can see we had way more possession, we created more opportunities we just didn't really take them. Jamie Price got a goal in the third minute. James Madison with another for us. But it was two goals in the second half for Barnsley, which forced us to share, uh, I guess, a share of the spoils, really. Anyway, following on from that, two clean sheets in the league, which is always good. We beat Wolverhampton Wanderers 1-0. Great result there, really, because Wolves, of course, relegated just last season. And it was Kevin Kelly, as you can see here, getting a goal in the 22nd minute. A player who's so far this year, you know, he's got two man of the matches across seven kind of games he's been involved in in the championship. Not too bad of a record. Of course, the 21-year-old was such a massive component of our team last year. And, uh, well, he's been uh, another massive component of our team this year. And this was a great little win away from home. And we followed that up with a 3-0 win against a newly promoted side. As you can see here, QPR put to the sword. But Kevin Kelly... Two penalties missed, two, and he's been taken off penalty duties uh, following that. But yeah, 3-0 it finished. This game was a very good performance, to be honest. You can see the whole team played fairly well. We made a few subs, we mixed things up a little bit. And Sam Booty, actually, getting the Man of the Match award. This guy, he had a little bit of a slow start to his time at the club, but two assists and one goal in the game against QPR was superb. Unfortunately, following on from that, pulled his hamstring out for a few weeks with that, so we are going to be missing him. But the 23-year-old, I'm really excited to see what he can do. He looks like he could be an absolutely incredible incredible kind of attacking midfielder for us going forward. Anyway, the most recent game we had against Burnley, another team, or sorry, not Burnley, Birmingham, another team who were recently promoted. You can see here, it's another game that we're probably going to kick ourselves and feel like we should have won, and I, I feel like we should have won, to be honest. It finished 1-1. Uh, George McEachern getting an early goal for them. Jay Beckford with a goal in the second half for us wasn't quite enough. We couldn't kind of take that goal and move on and uh, continue to perform well, and when we had to settle for a share of the spoils. So as I said, kind of in the league, we're not doing too bad, you know. Eight for the moment, pretty decent. Of course, we have taken on a few teams kind of in and around us. You can see both Burnley and Huddersfield, the two teams we've lost to, currently occupy the top two spots in the league, and each of those teams has only lost the one game. So perhaps an indication there to see uh, that they are perhaps two of the strongest teams in the league. Elsewhere, you can see QPR, who we beat 3-0, really struggling. A minus 17 goal difference after seven games. Not ideal for them. Wolverhampton Wanderers down in 19th. I mentioned they were relegated just last year. And, uh, well, they've struggled. They won the league the year prior to that. But with Yannick Carrasco leading the way, um, they've not really been having too much luck yet. Of course, we did beat them as well. Anyway, looking at the player stats, you can see none of our players kind of feature in the top goal scorers. And one of the reasons behind that is that it's really been a team effort so far. You can see three players with three goals. Of course, great to see Kevin Kelly and Jay Beckford getting goals. Jamie Price as well has really hit the ground running. The, uh, you know, former Swansea youngster, a player who I've really bigged up, I feel like, to be the player who can hopefully carry us to glory. 23 years old, he looks absolutely superb. And playing out on the kind of wider areas, he's really not looked out of his depth. You can see in the league, three assists, two goals. He's played a, a fair kind of few positions for us this year. 
And uh, to be honest, he's been a, a very impressive player. You can see he's played right winger. He's also played as a striker for us. And uh, actually, he's given his best performances so far when he has played out wide. So maybe maybe that's where he'll play for the long-term future. In terms of our team, I mentioned Sam Booty's injury. That is the only injury to speak of. We did make a few transfers, however, uh, before the window slammed shut. Of course, we talked about Ross Everidge as a player I was looking to bring in last episode. Just a third-choice goalkeeper, really. A good player, 29 years old. Very small wages. Came in for a fairly measly fee of £160,000. The next player we brought in, a returning face. Brad Lynch, he's back. The um, the Middlesbrough youngster, of course, a player who was on loan at us last year. He got five goals in nine games, but he just didn't quite get enough first-team opportunities. I don't know how many opportunities, in truth, he's going to get this season, but he's a very good backup striker to have and a very good impact sub. I feel like that is what he could really do well for us. He has great pace, great determination, good off the ball and work rate. You know, we can bring him on, 30 minutes left in a game. He's going to inject some speed into the game. He kind of exerts himself around. He's got some half-decent strength, his anticipation and composure are good and he's going to give kind of the defenders something to think about on off the bench you can see two appearances off the bench so far one goal but a 7.3 average rating nothing to be scoffed at there for him the last player we've signed Mustafa Hamdi a little bit of a bizarre one perhaps we signed him from Ismaili uh, who I believe are an Egyptian side I'd probably pronounce that wrong so I will issue apologies now but Mustafa Hamdi here £600,000 pay paid doesn't have a work permit. He joins us on a two-year deal for a, a tiny fee, as I mentioned, of £600,000. He's currently on loan at uh, Sparta Prague. You can see he actually scored on his league debut for them. So that's fantastic to see. But this guy, he's only 18 years old. He's regularly playing for Egypt's um, national team, which is hopefully going to help him get a work permit in the not-so-distant future. And while looking at him, very, very good physicals all around. His pace really stands out, particularly that acceleration. But 15 first touch is fantastic. 16 vision, 13 passing really well-rounded mentals just his work rate just below 10 but the rest of his you know mentals really stand out physically very gifted if he can just improve his technicals a little bit over the kind of coming years he's gonna be an absolutely fantastic player and I say that um, kind of you know the whole improving his technicals he's already got 16 dribbling 15 first touch 13 tackling and 12 technique they're fairly good at this level of football if we look at his report um, well suited to Premier League football could become a Premier League centre midfielder I really feel a little bit annoyed, really, about the fact that, of course, we have Mustafa Hamdi, the Egyptian who we've signed. But we've still got a guy, Akusu, who's on loan at FC 20. These two players would just walk straight into my first team and completely change my first team. But they don't have work permits. And uh, it's a bit of an annoyance. Uh, with the kind of work permit situation with Brexit, the way it works, if we just look at the rules... Uh, you can see the work permit rules. There's a point system, basically, when you appeal it. And it's to do with the wages, um, kind of that your players have so if a player is a top earner at the club he'll get three points towards his kind of you know system if he's a player in an active league playing in one of the top leagues in Europe he gets points and I am wondering if when we get to the Premier League if the kind of point system is going to work in our favour because the point system is fairly generous in terms of you know the the wages these players are Ikusu and Hamdi would probably be top earners for us um, I guess the only, only other issue is, like, we need them to get one more point somewhere. And that can be, I guess, where we come unstuck a little bit. Because, of course, we've already signed them. So the whole transfer fee um, kind of uh, points that you can earn aren't really an option there. But, you know what, we'll sit. I'm hoping both those players obviously break into the first team. I feel a lot more optimistic about Hamdi doing that because he's already playing for Egypt. Akusu, on the other hand, he's playing a little bit infrequently, actually, at the moment for the under-21s at the Ivory Coast. But a big problem I've got at the Ivory Coast is... Their midfield is just very, very talented. They've got players like Pierre Zebil. They've got Fulgini as well. You can see these players, absolutely superb centre midfielders. It's going to take a really good effort for Bayakusi to break in, and he's really going to have to do well on his loan spell. But anyway, that, I digress. We've kind of gone on a little bit of a tangent there, but I feel like when you have two absolutely incredible young players who you're not able to play and who would be good enough for your first team, it's perhaps worth just mentioning them now and then. Anyway, looking at the rest of our performers, you can see it really has been, as I already mentioned, kind of a team effort. The average rating's very, very impressive so far. Harrop's done fairly well, to be honest. Of course, signed uh, this year to be a right midfielder, potentially a left midfielder as well, kind of play out on, in the wide areas. Joined us uh, from Huddersfield for a very small fee, and uh, he's contributed fairly well, and he'll be on the bench waiting. You can see other top performers. Jay Beckford, definitely the kind of standout player, a 7.3 uh, nine average rating for 
for him in all competitions. Can't complain about that. And also, David Gums, of course, a player we signed from Liverpool. Uh, had a loan spell at Swansea last year. I'm still a little bit kind of hesitant about him because of that low natural fitness. I feel like that's always going to be a bit of a problem for him. But so far, 7.16 average rating in the championship. A very, very good kind of welcome, I guess, to the league for him. He really has hit the ground running, which is, well, pleasing to see. Anyway, let's get into today's game against the Huddersfield. They have been struggling a little bit. As I mentioned, Sam Booty currently out injured, so we've had to make some changes there. Of course, for the game against uh, Burnley, I talked about the fact I was experimenting with an advanced playmaker. I've decided to scrap that. We're going to play the 4-2-3-1, which has worked well for us so far. And, uh, well, this is the team we're going to go with. In goal, we're going to go with Chucky, a very good goalkeeper. He's had a fairly solid start to the season. He's only played three games for us in the championship. He has been suffering a few injuries. He actually picked up a damaged uh, shoulder midway through August. So that was a little bit of a pain. Uh, but he's back in the first team now. You'll notice he has got a little bit of a upset kind of nature at the moment because... Well, he's not got a very good win bonus. Out of everyone at the team, I lowered the win bonus so we had more money to invest. He is the only player who's complained. I mean, get your priorities right, Chucky. You're not going to get any good bonuses unless you win the league anyway. Anyway, Gustavo Rojas at right back, the Panama International. Very good player, but might not get a work permit, which would be a bit of a shame. In the centre of the defence, we're going to go with Stuart Rumsby. Had a very good start to the year alongside Gums, who we've already talked about. Those two players, of course, forged a really good partnership. It's been a bit of a shame, really, to kind of see Harry Lennon fall out of, kind of, I guess, the popular vote in terms of playing for us. Uh, you can see here his appearances total now for Hereford is 157. That is a club record. He did break that in just the last month. And he has been making, you know, appearances when Gum's been struggling with fitness. And, uh, yeah, he is still getting first-team football, Harry Lennon. But, obviously, with the two young Scottish players kind of forging a nice allegiance at the back, it's been difficult to drop them. At left-back, we go with Sean Kavner. Not the greatest start to the year, but not too bad either. Uh, going into the midfield, we have Needham and Mulhall. I talked about the fact Mulhall, of course, got sent off in that game. Since then, he's been fairly good. You know, obviously, playing the centre mid on defend duty, I feel like bookings are inevitability. It's just a shame he picked up two in the same game and got sent off. Anyway, alongside those guys, we've got, of course, Tristan Needham. Very good player. Absolutely love this guy. One of the best signs I think we've made during our time here at Hereford. Of course, one of the club's big earners. But the left-footed deep-line playmaker has just been sublime for it. And he's continued his good form that he had last year into this year. Anyway, our attacking midfield is where the real firepower lies this year. We have Jamie Price playing out on the right, the Welshman. Out on the left, we, of course, go with Jay Beckford. Cutting in on his right foot this year, of course. Played out on the right last year. He is right-footed, but he's made that left wing his own. And he's been playing very, very well there indeed. Of course, with Booty out injured, it op opened up an opportunity. I had the debate of, do I want to play Ben Marshall or do I want to play play Madison. I've actually opted, at least today, to play Marshall. You can see when we compare these two guys, Ben Marshall, probably the better player, particularly in an attacking sense. His physical is obviously a little bit better as well in terms of his pace, natural fitness. He's a little bit stronger on the ball. Uh, so he's going to play there. He's done fairly well, actually, Marshall, so far. He's got one goal and a 6.7 rating. He's not had all that many starts, so he gets a chance to do, hopefully, the, the work for us today. And, of course, up top, we're going to go with Kevin Kelly. I did actually drop this guy at one point following the two penalty misses he had against against QPR we kind of mixed up uh, the, the strike force a little bit we let Price play as our out and out, out, and out striker of course we have got other options uh, I talked a little bit about it last episode the 4-3-1-2 is an option that we have as an alternative formation with Price and Kelly obviously being two fantastic strikers who we may you know at some point need to resort to playing them alongside each other up top but um, we're going to persist with the 4-2-3-1 I feel like it's the system that best suits the players we've got. Of course, with players like Marshall and Price playing in midfield, players you'd probably look at their attributes and consider them more strikers than anything. Um, I feel like we have a lot of goals in us. Perhaps we don't have the most creative of attacking midfielders, but I feel like that's where Needham really comes into the plan. You know, the centre midfielder playing that deep line and playmaker role, it's his job really to pull the strings, to pick out a pass, and hopefully... Um, well, get us a result here. It's going to be tricky, Fulham. Um, they scraped promotion two years ago to the Premier League uh, via the playoffs. Following on from that, uh, they obviously last year they finished bottom of the Premier League and they weren't very competitive at all. But they're a team that, you know, they still have quality in their side and we're going to have to be, I guess, wary of that. As the ball gets whipped in, Kavner blocks it. Second ball in, a Sombolonga. Chucky at the near post gets beaten. Not the greatest goalkeeping by him. He's still a little bit rusty. He's only played three games this year, of course. Uh, the Nigerian goalkeeper, but he's been beaten there in a situation where, if I'm honest, you'd expect him 
to make the save. I mentioned kind of Fulham's quality. They've got obviously a fair few regions and players you might not recognise, but Britta Sombolonga, a very, very well-established striker at this level, and we've just given him a little bit too much space. And, uh, well, it was a relatively easy finish. Well, with five minutes gone, it's it's going to be a tricky game this. You know, we're, we are away from home against a relegated side. I thought this game was going to be tricky. Last time, of course, we took on Burnley, who are currently top of the league. But this is a Fulham side who... Well, they've struggled for form. And when you look at a team and kind of see that they're struggling in the league after seven games and they have a similar record to you, you fancy yourself to go out there and try and get a result against them. And, well, I'm not going to give up all hope yet. Obviously, plenty of time left. And actually, we are currently, at least, in possession of the ball. Need him. Going to be trying to pull the string from deep, as I already mentioned. And, uh, well, he's got the ball again here. Nice take around the man. Kelly holding up the play. Back to Mulhall. Now with Needham. Options on ahead. Nice patient play here. Price took it inside. Beats one man, lays it into Kelly. Can he finish that? It hits the woodwork and it's going to be cleared away. Lovely build-up play. Good to see uh, Price and Kelly kind of linking up with each other. Of course, the right attacking midfielder and the striker. And, well, the chance might not be over yet. Needham crosses it to Rojas. Can he pull the trigger? It's deflected. And, uh, well, the keeper holds on to it in the end. A very good effort there. But, well, we have hit the woodwork in the opening 10 minutes. And following, I guess, conceding very early on, it's a good way to respond. But we do need to defend here. And, we well, we do defend Price. Lots of grass in front of him to run into. He decides, I'm a right midfielder. I'm going to go and run out onto the right instead of chasing down the ball and leaves it for the defender to deal with. But we do have the ball again, so I won't criticise his lack of work right there. And, oh, well, Kevin Kelly, can he win the ball in the air? He doesn't, but he puts under enough pressure to ensure that we retain the ball here. Another ambitious ball by Needham. But it is back with Marshall now. Beckford, Kelly's inside. Price is waiting on that right-hand side. Marshall now. Kelly could be through here. Can he finish it? It's a penalty. Paul Digby has hacked him down from behind. He said, no chance you are going through and having this. And, well, I talked about Kevin Kelly missing two penalties against QPR. You'll notice that Price is on the penalties now. He's been, he's been swapped. I feel like if you miss two penalties in the same game, you shouldn't be on penalties anymore for the season. So it's going to be pricey to have a shot. This is a chance for his fourth goal of the season. The Welsh international sign from Swansea. Can he finish it? He kicks it straight at the goalkeeper. I mean, he has good penalty taking. I don't know what to say. I don't know if he's tried to penenker it. It's gone straight down the middle. I mean, Fulham scored with their first shot of the game, but in the opening 20 minutes, it's been all one-way traffic since that goal. You can see two clear-cut chances. We've hit the woodwork. We've had slightly more possession. We've created so many more opportunities. And we are on the attack again here. Kevin Kelly, back to Mulhall. Kelly now again with the ball. Some space behind. Lays it into Price. He missed the penalty. And, well, he finishes a, a way harder effort. Fair play to him. Jamie Price with the goal. Fourth goal of the season. Good to see Kelly get the assist. I talked about the fact that these two players, Kevin Kelly and Jamie Price, I see them as being our two kind of big players this year. Two players that have to perform. And if these two guys can link up playing as a striker and a right midfielder, that is fantastic as far as I'm concerned because... We have got a little bit of a problem, at least at the moment, where they're two very good strikers who are natural strikers. And obviously, Jamie Price is having to play out of position to kind of fit our system. And, well, this game, at least, it seems to be working for us, despite that penalty miss. Anyway, since that goal that we did score, um, I mean, the tide of this game's changed a little bit. Fulham are creating a few more opportunities. It's opened up a little bit more. And, well, a minute before half-time, there could be another chance here. Rumsby wins it. Now we need him. Kevin Kelly kind of exploring the space ahead of him, trying to find a channel to move into. Now with Marshall, into Kelly, hits the woodwork again. It's very similar to the previous woodwork that was hit, and, well, uh, Fulham, they managed to scramble the ball to safety. I mean, it's a very good away performance, this. I'm going to tell the boys they've been unlucky so far. I do want to encourage them as well. Obviously, there is 45 minutes left in this game to try and get something, and... Well, we've had slightly more possession. We've had twice as many shots. We've hit the woodwork twice. We've had four clear-cut chances. But, well, the fact of the matter is it remains 1-1 here. And we need to step it up. And that's what we're going to try and do here. Penny looks like he could be getting a booking immediately. In fact, the key, uh, the ref lets him off. It's a little bit generous. Kavner's really struggled at left-back. A 5.9 rating him. I might have to take him off. But, well, let's not worry too much. Immediately into this second half. Stuart Rumsby, the centre-back, on loan from Newcastle United, grabs a goal for us. Fair play to him. He only has 10 jumping reach. I've criticised his lack of ability in the air. He didn't exactly jump like a gazelle, but he's jumped high enough and got a very powerful, well-directed header, actually, over the player on the post, who perhaps should have done a little bit better to at least try and stop the ball hit the back of the net. But we're not going to complain. We're going to take that, and hopefully now we can kick on in this game. And keep things going. That's got to be the plan, hasn't it, Shirley? Half an hour left. 
I'm going to make a change here. Mulhall's struggling a little bit for fitness. I was going to make a change. The highlights kicked in. We'll wait to see how this plays out as, of course, if they score, might alter the kind of subs and changes that I was going to do tactically in this game. Although Kavner, who I was thinking about taking off, he's won the ball delightfully there, number three, and he's going to be through here. Maybe maybe I shouldn't take him off. Kavner, can you get a ball in? He can, and Kelly's there. Right, you're not coming off. I've changed my mind. I am going to take off Sean Mulhall, however, who's struggling a little bit for fitness. I'm going to bring in Tom Davies for him. Uh, I think I'm going to make another change as well. Jay Beckford's not had the greatest of games. Um, I've not really got a great option, I guess, as an alternative to him. I guess what we'll do, actually, we're going to play James Madison out of position on the left-hand side. I'm going to give him a chance to leave his mark on this game. Beckford has been one of our big players this year. You know, He's been very consistent in the opening seven games of the year. Not really had to think about subbing him off. And we don't have exactly a great kind of secondary left attacking midfielder option. So uh, James Madison can come in for him. A lovely header there by Kevin Kelly. It's got to be said, a near post kind of poacher's instinct finish. And well, a two goal cushion has been instated in this match. We've had so many clear cut chances. It could have been significantly more goals in truth. Um, but well, Fulham, they've, they've done okay. They've remained competitive in this game. But they've not created a lot yet, and there's going to be big questions asked of them now uh, Well, to try and create something in this game in the remaining 25 minutes because as things stand, they're going to be going down and sinking without a trace, really. You'd have to say it's since that early goal, they've really they've not threatened our goal too much at all this game. Chucky's upped his rating. He's had a few more saves, although, as I said, he's not really had a whole lot to do. It's been a great performance, though, by Jamie Price and Kevin Kelly in this game. And while we're 10 minutes left, we have one sub left. I'm going to make it. Uh, I'm going to bring in Brad Lynch, who's on loan, of course, from Middlesbrough. We're going to take off Ben Marshall, just mix things up there, get some fresh legs on in the midfield just to maybe tire out that Fulham defence and get perhaps a fourth goal if we could. That would be nice, wouldn't it, to end the game? Unfortunately, time is just trickling away here, and I think we're going to have to settle for the 3-1. Unless there's going to be a very late goal, which, well, with half an hour left, it seems unlikely. Although we do have the ball in their penalty area, I guess. But they're going to deal with this here. But a good result, nevertheless. You know, Fulham, a newly relegated side. They would have fancied themselves at home against us. They've got a very similar record to us. I kind of talked about it earlier. But the only two teams we've lost to so far are Huddersfield and Burnley, who are the top two teams in the league. So, I mean, if that's anything to go by, I feel like we really need to be aiming for the playoffs this year. And I imagine... Hopefully, if a few results have gone our way, we are going to actually be moving into the playoffs with this result, which would be exactly what I want to see from us at this stage. And indeed, we are. You can see here we've moved up into fifth. Uh, Burnley actually drew. Who did they draw against? Curious. Um, I can't see them. They must have played away. They drew against Reading, who are struggling down in 18th. So, apparently, Burnley, they're not unbeatable. Huddersfield, on the other hand, beat Stoke 3-2. A good result for them, I guess. But anyway, two defeats after eight games. That's pretty good going. You know, I'm pretty content with how we're getting on at the moment. We have got an EFL Cup game against Reading coming up. But to be honest, I don't think that's going to be all that exciting for you guys to watch. So I don't think we'll do that game. In terms of when we will be back, you can see we're kind of in mid-September now. I think we'll come back in a month's time. I'm looking at maybe doing that Blackburn game. Blackburn up in fourth. They've had a very good start to the season. Of course, aside... Um, who were uh, promoted just last year. We actually played alongside them, of course, in League One where they struggled, but they've hit the ground running. They've started to improve as a side. They've got this guy called Hurst who's been really leading their line as one of their key players. 24 goals in 63 games for them. He looks like a pretty good little player who we might have to be wary of. So, yeah, I think we'll come back for that game. It's in only a few games of time, really, but it is in about a month. It should be a cracker. Hopefully, of course, I'll see you guys for it. It is going to be at home, so hopefully we can kind of up our home form which has been a little bit lackluster as of yet but you can see we have played a lot of away games so far this season but anyway guys that's going to wrap up everything from me hopefully you did enjoy as always if you did please do leave a like on the video it does greatly help me out i really do appreciate it if you've got any comments as well about this series about this season about my squad anything you like you can ask me what the meaning of life is i probably won't have the answer but you can ask it if you want uh, feel free to. I, I look forward to reading all your philosophical questions now in the comment section. But anyway, that's going to be all from me. Thank you for watching. We're going on a ramble. Let's cut it off here. Here it is, me, Jack. Thank you for watching, as always, guys. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. Hey.